Hello, my name is Mr. Carver. I'm an associate of Mr. Brown. It's very nice of you to join us. Well, I guess that's true. You didn't really have much of a choice. I hope you'll excuse my voice. Yes, it seems I've come down with a rather stubborn cold that does not want to go away. Well, I'm taking medicine for it. Antibiotics, so hopefully that will help. But yes, I do have a bit of a sore throat. Anyway, that's not important. What is important is the fact that you owe Mr. Brown a great deal of money. Well, not for Mr. Brown, but you still owe him $2,000 and, of course, the 30% interest. Now, Mr. Brown has been very patient with you, even gave you an extension to pay back the money and the 30% that accrues every week. And well, you've made a couple of small payments, but not nearly enough. That's why Mr. Brown called me in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Well, as for the two other associates standing on either side of you, you don't have to worry about them. At least... Not for now. So, Mr. Brown usually calls me in when it comes to problem cases such as you. Now, you've borrowed money from Mr. Brown previously and you paid it back. That's why Mr. Brown was very generous in only charging you 30% that accrues every week. But it seems that your past performance is clearly no indication of your current performance. Now, I'm a reasonable man, and so is Mr. Brown. So I'm going to give you a chance to explain yourself and to explain why Mr. Brown hasn't been paid back his money. Please, go ahead. The floor is yours. Mm-hmm. No, please, continue. I'm listening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I think I'm going to stop you right there. You see, I know for a fact that you did not use the money for that emergency repair on your car. Oh, now see, that's something I really don't like. Lying to me when I already know the truth 
is not going to help you at all. As a matter of fact, it's just going to get me very upset. And trust me, you don't want to see what happens when I get very upset. Oh, how do I know that you're lying? Because I went to all four of the mechanic shops in town. Yes, I went to the one connected to Prince Royal gas station in the center of town. They usually have the best rates for car repairs. That's where most of the people in this uh, working class town usually go to. And there was no record of any repairs. So I checked the other three garages in town. Oh yes, including the one on the outskirts of town. Yes, the one that only does transmissions. Mm -hmm. Now you said it was an engine issue, but I made sure to check that one as well. Yes. You never brought in your vehicle. So I'll ask you again. What did you use the money for? And how come you've made such miserably small payments? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you have to understand. It's not as though that's Mr. Brown's problem, is it now? I mean, after all, my uncle used to have a gambling addiction. A rather bad one, until the family disowned him. Oh yes, he spiraled rather badly. So... You took the money, you were certain that you had a hot tip, a little bit of insider information on a horse, and you put it all down. Did the horse even show or place? No. Came in dead last. Well, that's too bad. That really is too bad, but And I realize that gambling is an addiction, like alcoholism. But here's the thing. Mr. Brown never did anything to cause your gambling addiction. He never encouraged it. Well, no, 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 no. Loaning you two grand is not encouraging. He didn't ask you what it was for. You just said you needed it, and he loaned it to you. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's true. Going by your credit... The bank never would have loaned you the money, not even as a personal loan. And your credit union already had issues with you, didn't they? So you couldn't get a loan through your credit union. And, oh, yes, yes, you, pr you might have been able to secure a payday loan, but then again, the uh, local church shut that place down. Let's see, what were they charging? 20%? Yes, yes. They were charging 20%, and that's the legal limit. 
in this state, isn't it? 20%. Yes. So they were charging 20%. And people like you who couldn't get a bank loan, couldn't get a loan through a credit union, and even your friends and family wouldn't loan you the money, assuming they could even afford to do so, they still wouldn't have done it. So yeah, yeah, a few months ago, you could have gotten a nice loan at only 20%, that doesn't accrue every week. 20% payday loan. Oh, and if you don't pay, all they can do is take you to court. Have their lawyers come after you. Let me make this very clear. I am not a lawyer. These two burly gentlemen standing next to you who could easily tear your arms and legs off if I told them to, they are not lawyers either. Well, don't blame Mr. Brown. Yeah, the bank that wasn't competition. Credit union wasn't competition. Friends and family, that wasn't his competition. People use those options first, and if they can get a loan through them, they do. But that payday place, the one that Reverend Stevens and the local church got together and they shut it down because it was immoral. Yeah. Funny, that payday place was the only direct competitor to Mr. Brown. And if you defaulted on a loan, all they could do was take you to court. Yes, Mr. Brown yeah, he doesn't use the court system. He uses me. Yes. It sure was very nice of Reverend Stevens and the church to shut down that payday place. Business really picked up for Mr. Brown after that. Oh, yes. A lot more loans. A lot. Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. Um, loan shark is such a, such a dirty term. Yes. Yes. I mean, after all, it's not like those payday places put a, well, it's not like they put a gun to your head and force you to take out a loan. Yes. I mean, it's not like Mr. Brown put a gun to your head and forced you to take out that two grand, is it? Yeah. Oh, this? Just a little twenty-two caliber baby Browning clone from Czechoslovakia. Only holds four rounds, but... I don't think we'll be needing that many. Do you? Now the problem is, if you just hadn't have tried to skip town, because the truth is, we know where you live. We know what your wife looks like. We know what your children look like. We know who their friends are. We know where they go to school. Now, Mr. Brown is a very reasonable man. He doesn't target children. But see, your wife is an adult. And 
then she made the very stupid mistake of marrying you. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm afraid we're beyond that point. Well, I did look into that. And the truth of the matter is, I know for a fact that you own your car, free and clear. Yes, yes. It's very nice, very very nice car. Not quite sure how you convinced the dealership to give you a loan on it, but yes, well, it was very generous of your wife's rich father to pay it off for you as a Christmas present to both of you. So here's what you're going to do. Your vehicle is currently worth, well, let's just say it will more than cover your loan and the 30% accruing interest rate. Oh, yes. That's what you're going to do. You're going to sign over your luxury vehicle to Mr. Brown. And then the loan will be forgotten. Otherwise, maybe my little baby Browning clone inserts itself into your life and makes things very difficult for you. I have a variety of options. I actually hate violence, and you're quite fortunate that you have something of value, specifically that luxury vehicle of yours and your wife. So you have a choice. Either your wife starts dancing at one of Mr. Brown's clubs to pay off the debt, or you sign over your vehicle to Mr. Brown. Like I said, you are very fortunate that you have a couple of things that Mr. Brown would like. So which is it, your wife or your vehicle? Are you serious? You're actually hesitating? Look, you're going to sign over your vehicle to Mr. Brown. Because if you don't, I'm not even going to bother with your wife. These men are going to beat you within an inch of your life. They're going to throw you out onto the street and you're going to crawl around because your legs aren't going to work anymore. And everyone in the neighborhood is going to know what happened to you. So don't sit there hesitating about which item you would like to give up. It is going to be your car. Because if you even remotely try to offer up your wife, screw it, I'll brutalize you myself. Sign over the pink slip to the car and the debt is forgotten. That's better. That's what I like to hear. Good. Very, very good. That is what I like to hear. <laughs>